I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today at uh, Javaland with Dan, Dan Allen, and then Andres uh, Almere. Hi. Mm. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, Dan, you are the you are basically the ASCII doctor, right? <laughs> <laughs> you hit it just don't fast. just yeah don't get hurt yeah because I can't save you. <laughs> <laughs> But so what, what do you do? So you were uh, you on the project for a long time. Tell us like some, something about what you do. Yeah, so uh, first and foremost, um, like, like many of you, I'm a writer. And um, we were looking for you know, ways to write more efficiently. And so I got involved in um, uh, a project at, at uh, Red Hat where we had to do some tutorials. And we said, well, which format are we going to write them in? They said, well, we're not going to write them in DocBook, that's for sure. Uh, not if you want them to ever get done. So we started looking at uh, different formats, and I actually I had discovered through um, a couple of colleagues of mine, um, Matthew McCulloch, Tim Berglund, who, who had written a couple books for O'Reilly, said, hey, you should check out this ASCII doc thing, kind of, kind of nice. I said, I don't know, I think we might use Markdown or restructured text or something. So anyway, I, um, I, I did analysis, kind of played around with, what if I had to write this tutorial in these languages? And um, you know, I said, well, it did, Markdown felt OK. It was missing some things. Restructured text, I couldn't make sense, heads or tails of it. It's crazy syntax. And then I was like, I'm, I'm going to kind of cash in for the night. And uh, I went back and said, let me try this ASCII doc thing. But the website, I don't know, the website for ASCII doc looks like it was made 20 years ago. So I'm, I'm not having a lot of faith in this. And so anyway, I, I, I sat down and started writing with it. And it was like, it, it just, I started putting down some, some content and I, and I felt motivated to write. And I said, this is it. This is what we want to be able to do. We want to love to do writing. Mm -hmm. So I got involved in ASCII doc and, and you know one of the things that we wanted to have was it was written in Python and it didn't work on it didn't work very well in GitHub and so we said well one of the things is if I write I want to share my writing and so I want to put it on GitHub I want people to read it but it's not it's not rendering on GitHub so what is it going to take to to get it rendered there and um, they said well we have, we have this project is it, but it's in Ruby and uh, you could you could sort of play around with it so Matthew McCulloch said yeah I got a person inside of GitHub he's been working on on um, on doing this parser, do you want to get involved? And so, you know, about uh, two days later, two days and 45 pull requests later, uh, I was deep into Ask a Doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just um, I just started to see where I could help. And um, actually, I was I was involved in uh, speaking of hacking. I was in it was uh, the 24 pull request campaign. So like right about uh, December 1st, this campaign starts. It's like a competition. It's kind of a personal thing, right? You 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 challenge yourself. Leading up to Christmas, uh, every day, can I send a pull request? So I said, well, ASCII Doctor is my project. So I'm going to send 24 pull requests to ASCII Doctor. So it got me into it. Like, it was definitely uh, the, the drive to get you know, my pull request done and to hack that got me into doing ASCII Doctor. And it, what's amazing is when we were contributing to the project then, it was just me and Ryan. Ryan's the one from GitHub. Mm -hmm. And um, now we have almost 200 people contributing to ASCII Doctor, and that's only like two and a half years later. Awesome. So, but we, you know, the, the key is, is that we have a hacking community. You know, absolutely, Andres has been huge, right. huge in the Hacker Garden uh, sessions, getting people involved in hacking, you know, and making them believe they can do it. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things that uh, around uh, two years ago, so I saw Dan, uh, tweeting about ASCII Doctor this and ASCII Doctor that, and I saw also Matthew and Tim saying good things about ASCII Doctor. And uh, I did notice that there was already uh, kind of like an incubated Maven plugin for ASCII Doctor. And there's a little bit of a feud between Maven and Gradle when you see that it's one plugin in one area, but it's not in the other one. So I said, well, of course. This, there, there ought to be a Gradle plugin for ASCII Doctor, so why don't make one? And uh, this was at uh, the Hacker Garden back at JFocus 13. But I didn't, I didn't have a single idea of, of uh, the ASCII doctor syntax. And I had only uh, made one or two very trivial Gradle plugins. So I was definitely out of, it was, I was not up to the task. But I paired up with somebody else, well, not a non team from JFrog, and he had done some stuff. This, this is the great thing about Hacker Garden, that even if you do not know something, you can learn from the other guys. So Absolutely. together. We, brought, uh, we wrote the first version of the ASCII Doctor Gradle, and uh, Dan, get, uh, Dan get out a kick out of this, and we started in future Hacker Gardens uh, in continue improving the plugin. 
So now uh, we have Hacker Garden meetings pretty much every single month. And every single month, I bring a tiny issue related to the ASCII Doctor Gradle plugin or something related to ASCII Doctor. And, uh, it, and this is pretty much all around the world. So uh, ASCII Doctor and Hacker Garden go hand to hand. Absolutely. ASCII Doctor and uh, Hacker Garden, ASCII Doctor and Hacking, and ASCII Doctor and Community. Yes. So one of the things I, I, I what I love about um, these communities is, is that I also look at the way the community is being created, and I think we're learning a lot of things each time we do a project. And ASCII Doctor is a great example. So when companies are trying to do a, a community project, they often think, well, okay, what what will the community do? Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll develop something, and then we'll put it out there in open source, and maybe the community will get involved. ASCII Doctor is very much the opposite way. Is that the project was created by the community. So if you took, tried to take the community out of ASCII Doctor, you would end up with nothing. You wouldn't have anything left because there is no separation of the project team and then the community. The community is the project team. And we keep, ASCII Doctor keeps expanding into new realms that we never thought of. So one of the things that um, I was, it, it was very surreal for me when the Gradle plugin started um, at that hacker garden, I didn't necessarily have any sort of realization or expectation that that would ever exist. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like, hey, I want a Gradle plugin. Who out there wants to do one? It was very much like, um, you know, the community had an idea. The community wanted to do something. They wanted to hack on it and they created it. And now, if you look at the user base of ASCII Doctor, most of the users of ASCII Doctor are using the Gradle plugin, for sure. And, and that's the way we, we keep finding, is that the thing that is the most important today, we didn't even think was going to exist at some point. Mm -hmm. We hadn't, it wasn't even a, a thing on our roadmap, and that keeps happening over and over again. Another example is like the Chrome extension. So the Chrome extension is a beautiful thing. So you, the, the idea is that you, you have ASCII doc, but you want to see the HTML. And so you have to convert it, so people will need to install something. So. Uh, most of us who are developers already have Gradle, or we already have Ruby, or we have the ASCII Doctor extension. We don't have a problem with this. But then there are still a lot of users who they don't have ASCII Doctor. So the Chrome extension uh, was this idea that, that Guillaume Gersetti had. And he said, what if, I, what if I put it in the browser so you didn't have to install ASCII Doctor, you could just have the conversion in the browser? And I said, ah, I don't think. I don't know if we would and really use that too much. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and it turns out that that's the tool I use the most every day. So the, because the, the great thing about it is I could take my browser and I point that browser at any ASCII deck file anywhere that's accessible via URL, and it just shows me the HTML version. So yeah. Right. So what are some of the formats? So some of the formats that we can get is output. Right. So we have, um, HTML is definitely the leading format, uh, because HTML is so flexible. It's the easiest one to display anywhere. Yeah, right. it displays anywhere. It displays, obviously, in a browser. It displays inside of a rich window, inside of an IDE, or JavaFX, or something along those lines. Um, On different platforms as well. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and we can do, the, the interesting thing is, is that it's actually interesting. We're able to do a lot more things with HTML that the other formats always have to play catch up on. So a great example is font-based icons. Such a simple thing. We just get we integrate with Font Awesome in ASCII Doctor, and you can put icons wherever you want. So I saw in the Griffin guide, I just you had some icons. Love it. I love yeah, that. I, I love to sprinkle those small little icons. They just make the documentation look better. And it's only a tiny fraction of syntax that you have to put on your document, uh, and uh, it, it just reads naturally. It's, it really doesn't obstruct you too much from what you need to do, which is put the content right yeah. there. Yeah, and so what makes HTML great is that things like integrating with uh, font-based icons, that's just adding that font to your, to your, you know, to the, to the output. And it kind of handles itself, right? I mean, we don't, we don't have to do much. Syntax highlighting, you know, uh, is very easy. It, we have JavaScript-based syntax highlighters. We just dro drop them on there, and they make the code look nice. So we can just integrate with a lot of things in the browser, and the browser's a great integration platform. And, um, and then also, if you, you know, for, for, for sort of an ad hoc, you can get a PDF out of it. You just do print a PDF and, oh. hey, you get something that looks pretty good. Like, depending on what your needs are, if you, have a, if you just need something in the format of PDF and the layout, you're not too concerned about specific things, branding or whatever, it, it actually does a pretty good job. And you can also output to .book. And once you're in the .book world, then you can continue going to any other output formats. Yeah. So oh, you nice. use it, that, the .book pipeline for that. Yeah, exactly. And so it keeps also the URLs, right? Every time oh, you yeah. do the okay. 
That's yeah. because that's and we've actually thing. done some work there. So when one document refers to another document, there was some stuff we had to do there to get it so that no matter what output you were doing, it would still be able to make that connection. Uh, because you don't want to you don't want to hard code, for instance, a link directly to another document in HTML when you might output also to docbook or PDF where you're not linking to the HTML. So what we want to do is we want to capture what is it that you're linking to, and we'll try to figure out how to make the link in the output. Mm -hmm. So, but docbook's very important because it, in, the, in early stages especially, um, we are getting people to convert from docbook. So we say, hey, we can recreate what you are converting from anytime. So if you want to ever leave ASCII doc, use something else, or you have an existing tool chain like the Pivotal uh, teams already had a really nice docbook workflow, but they didn't want to write in docbook. So what they do is they write an ASCII doc, and then they just tack that onto the beginning of their workflow, and then they get the same output they always got, but now they have you know, the benefits of writing in a lightweight markup language. Okay. So that, that, that's very, and, and there's a lot of effort recently for LaTeX, or LaTeX. Um, so getting a nice converter from ASCII doc to LaTeX. And what's, what's really interesting about these types of converters is just like code generation generators and compilers, you can actually add quite, weave in quite a number of features as you're doing that conversion. If you were writing in LaTeX, you would have to actually write everything. Mm -hmm. If you write in ASCII doc, we can say, oh, I, I see what you're going for there. So we'll expand that out like a macro into a whole bunch of nice extras. Yeah, so people appreciate the conciseness there. Yeah, one interesting thing about the ASCII doc, uh, the ASCII doc, the project actually, uh, is that the syntax is, is quite concise, is, is easy to understand. But what happens under the covers is that the ASCII doc to, uh, project builds an AST of your documentation. And because it has an AST, it allows us developers to do crazy stuff with the, <laughs> with the content. Yeah. Because it's the same kind of stuff that we do with Java code anywhere or mm -hmm. any kind of source code. As long as you have access to the AST, then, then you can create new paragraphs, you can add new elements or remove, you can change anything you want to. So at the end, it feels like you're actually programming documentation yes. instead of just writing in some ugly uh, text editor mm -hmm. with formatting and I, I don't know really uh, writing t uh, documents articles blog posts with ASCII doc is really easy and it feels natural actually for us developers yeah and that's one of the, the things that we believe very strongly is that we believe that documentation is code and we believe that documentation mm -hmm. should be treated like code and, but, but it also means that we should use some of the techniques that we use for code to be concise, to, to, to get um, dynamic behavior, things like that. Uh, but we want it version like code, we want it to be shared like code, et cetera. And it actually enables quite a number of uh, um, possibilities to be able to, to think of it that way. So but can also like writers use it? Or yeah. do you have a lot of writers Absolutely. using it? Absolutely. So even early on in, in, um, in the ASCII doctor development, there were a couple of people who had filed some issues. And I love when people come and file issues that perhaps um, they don't necessarily know yet how they want to use it. They're getting familiar with it. They file some issues. They want to, it's their first touch to the project, right? And they have some questions. And we have writers who are writing business books. We have writers who are writing math books. Uh, we have some writers who are writing just uh, some fiction books. And they, it was great because we, could see the assumptions that we were making about the audience being technical. Mm -hmm. So that way we could kind of weed, weed out some of that thinking and try to think broadly. Because the thing is, is that, um, well, th one of the things I, I like to say is that if you think about writing formats, before we had computers, we wrote on a piece of paper. And paper and lightweight markup languages are very similar. As a matter of fact, the, a lot of the shorthand in lightweight markup is inspired by shorthand in writing. Mm -hmm. So you would put yep. stars around something, or you might put a little annotation and use a special symbol or shorten something down. So the thing is, we always wrote in text editors. We just did it with a pen and paper. So now we're kind of revisiting that with the advantages of the, what the computer can do, like with a compiler, with a build tool, with a, you know, keeping your code or your documentation dry or reusable so that you're not copying and pasting, and obviously editing is much simpler. We can have diff tools to see differences between last week and this week of editing this document. So we have a lot of new things, but really we're going back to writing you know, with pen and paper. Yep. And so that's why I think, so when, I, when people ask, well, what about non-technical people? I say, this is why I think it applies to them even more, because it's gonna be like the, when they were writing on paper. 
and they should be able to, they were able to do it then, they should be able to do this. But sometimes they do get scared. So we try to provide tools that make them, you know, more motivated and less scared. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how, how can people get involved? I'm sorry, I was trying to get your screen, but I can't, I don't see it. So oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll so add the link, though. Okay, so the, um, the best way to get involved, you know, you can find out about the project at ascidoctor.org. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have on that website, we have a link to the discussion group and then also the GitHub repositories. And we talk a lot on Twitter as well. So actually, probably the easiest way to sort of find us, so to speak, would just be to say something about ASCII Doctor on Twitter, and we'll see it, yeah, for sure. Exactly. We'll so, see it. So coming back to one of the things that uh, Dan mentioned earlier, I believe that the uh, ASCII Doctor community uh, is, is really big and is, is really helpful and very friendly. Uh, what is important about the community, I believe, is kind of like the, uh, the poster child of how an open source project works, because it's all about the people. The people that participate actively in the community are there because they're scratching their own itch. They're not just looking for an answer because they want to do uh, something that is theoretical. They're looking for an answer because they need something to get fixed. And if they don't get an answer or if somebody cannot do it, then they will most likely start a fork or, or start a branch and then provide a solution for it. Mm -hmm. Instead of just waiting uh, for an answer, most people are very active. So this is kind of like a call to arms. You don't have to be an expert. So I definitely am not an expert on Ruby, uh, but I'm looking forward to doing some stuff with Ruby in order to help the overall community, but not just the Java-based uh, or the Java part of the ASCII Doctor community. Uh, so anybody can join as long as, as you have something to say, whether it be just, uh, it's, there are no silly questions. There are always interesting questions. As long as you have something to say, you, you get a, a you get a doubt, you get something. Why is Atsky dog not doing this thing, or could it do it this way? Is it better performance? I don't know. Anything that is good enough, and then you don't know exactly how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yeah. And so far, it has given us a lot of goodies. Yeah, and we're changing. I mean, you know, Scott Jacoon had said uh, the other day on his in his blog that this has really serious implications for the publishing industry, and I think it's it's. It's funny that that quote would come up because it's not like we set out trying to uh, disrupt publishing. Mm -hmm. But when you bring a lot of people together and they have these ideas, uh, what you get as a result is disruption. And that's great because we're, we, we have people who don't see boundaries. They don't see barriers. They see only their ideas that they want to share and they try to do it. And that's how we move forward. We don't move forward by telling everyone, have good ideas today. We, have, we, we move forward by saying, feel welcome today. And then they come, and when they come, they have the ideas and they bring them. Right. And uh, it was interesting that I, I find that some of the most interesting comments, uh, conversations that we have, are conversations that, you know, some people might worry was th that they were asking a, a, a dumb question, or people worry, well, what if I, what if I sound dumb? I, I actually feel like the questions that are the most out there are actually the most interesting. So one guy had a, a question the other day. He said, I put source highlighter, and it's not working. And he said, here's what I've done. I put source highlighter, and the name of the source highlighter is code ray. And so the source highlighter uh, value was value code ray. And I said, value space code ray, why is it that? And I didn't look at it saying, how could someone be dumb and not know how it was? I said, how, where in the internet is it that the word value and the word code ray are next to each other, next to this attribute? Is that possible? So I went to the documentation and I searched, and sure enough, when we wrote it, we we wrote it as like, that's where the value goes and here's an example value. So he literally copied what we wrote and pasted it in and says what you wrote didn't work. Yep. So I said, that's interesting, such an interesting conversation that you saw it the way I didn't see it that way. I love that. I just love being able to see the world in different ways through, through the feedback that we get. All right. Yep. yep. We are so. experts at failing. Yeah, so, that's right. So it's okay to, to tell us, uh, well, this is not working. You, you, I don't understand why you brought it, and it's most likely that it was very late in the evening, and we didn't understand it. I and it was our, yeah, it, was, it ended up being our mistake, not his mistake. He was following exactly, exactly what we told him to do. And right. so, but it was an opportunity to improve the docs. Right. And then what's great is I also fixed a bunch of paragraphs around, it. well, actually, he had sent a pull request and fixed some other things in that area of the docs. So that's another thing is taking the opportunity to just say, well, I'm in that area. Let's just... Let's just make it better. Why not? Right. And you have such a diverse audience. I mean, you have to take into account everybody from yeah. with different backgrounds. Right? That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and what the great thing about the Ask Adductor community, it's, it's the ultimate polyglot project because we have implementation in Ruby and, and an um, a, a integration layer in Java. We have a re-implementation in JavaScript and we're using extensions that also use things like C code, um, you know, the diagramming tools, other Java tools, et cetera. And we have Java, and, and of course the Groovy, the Groovy one. and the Groovy DSL. And what's great that I love is that each of the communities don't, no one wants to be a second class citizen. And that's great because it pushes everyone. So the JavaScript people in the beginning, uh, you know, we said, well, there's only so many things we can do with JavaScript because there's some limitations. So we won't be able to do that. And they wouldn't accept it. They said, no, we want to be as good as the Ruby implementation, so why can't we? And so th they keep pushing. And so the same thing with the Groovy, we said, well, when you write extensions, originally you could only write them in Ruby. And so the people that were doing in Gradle and, and Groovy, they said, that's not acceptable. We want to be able to write extensions in, in, in Groovy. And we said, well, we could be able to write extensions in Java, so that's pretty close. And they said, okay, we want it to be in Groovy. So sure enough, today, thanks to Robert Panzer's work on the Groovy DSL, you can actually write an extension in Groovy that looks almost identical to the conciseness of the one in Ruby. So they looked at it, and they didn't see the barriers. They said, I want to be able to type my extension like this. No matter what mountains we have to move to get there, we're going to move those mountains, and then we're going to be able to write my extension. And it's such, a uh, it's such an amazing moment when you can finally see that come to fruition. And it, and it was... Uh, it was funny because the Groovy uh, project immediately saw that and they said, we have been waiting for that since the beginning. We, you know, we're so grateful because now we can put those extensions uh, cleanly into the Gradle build. And it's just yeah. so rewarding to see everyone you know, be able to, to bring those ideas and then see it happen, right, yeah. to the success. So this is a perfect example where the, the competitive... Um human trait is works for it's us. It's actually right? working for the community, exactly. Yes, exactly, it has generated a lot of synergy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, where can I learn more? So the, the website, mm -hmm. and um, where can I find another event, maybe where they can just talk to you at an event? Or well, how? yeah, so anywhere where you find a Hacker Garden, you will definitely <laughs> hear about uh, Gradle and Nasky Doctor. And uh, well, Dan, myself, and other people travel around the world in different conferences. And we love to talk about these topics. So wherever we are, if we're in you know, Java user group meeting, or you see us on the street, just stop us and say, hey, I have a question about it. Uh, this thing or the other, then surely well, we have time to discuss it. Yeah, and the next event that I'll be at is uh, DevOps France. Will you, are you at oh, DevOps yeah. France? No, I won't. I will miss it, but I will be at Gridge in Madrid. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we have, uh, we have two other more people interested in asking, or at least members of the community, active members. And then the next one, I think, is going to be uh, the Great Indian Developer Summit in Lake April. Also, there's going to be a Hacker Garden there. So they can find all the Hacker Garden event at Hacker Garden. Hacker Garden. Hacker? Net. Okay. Yes, all of them are listed until uh, June of this year. Wonderful. Very and good. then the website again? Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. And um, uh, the DevOps France, and then I'll also be at Mixit as well. And uh, but but I, I I think that. You know, I go back to what I said earlier. Um, Twitter is a really important thing. If you look at the way that this community was built, and, and actually the several communities that I've built now, I would actually argue that, that, that Twitter is our connection platform. So almost every single community member that is involved, was a, the original touch came from Twitter. If, if it didn't come from, from an issue or a pull request, it, it, it probably came from Twitter, not from necessarily even the mailing list. So do you have a handle? Yes, hashtag? we use hashtag ASCII Doctor. Although since ASCII Doctor is such a unique name, mm -hmm. you don't even need to use the hashtag because it's actually you just search for ASCII Doctor, and you know, <laughs> if someone's writing about ASCII Doctor, it's probably about the project. Yeah, so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you for having you us. Yeah. Oops. Uh, where's my mouse? I can't find the mouse. <laughs> oh, do you not have the mouse? Because I'm sweaty. Yeah. Click here. Record. See? There, there. it is. Oh, there there it is. is. oh yeah. you know what it is? It was. Uh,